I'm Stuart McIntosh with the BBC News. Hello. The medical charity MSF has described a desperate humanitarian situation in the Sudanese state of North Darfur because of the conflict between the army and its paramilitary rivals, which began in April. Mohamed al is MSF's project coordinator in El Fasha. The situation in El Fasha remains tense. We hear shooting and shelling. The central market is closed because of the fighting and fears of looting. Businesses are closed and so many people have no income, which means that it's becoming a struggle for the people to buy food. In the hospital, we are receiving an average of 5 to 10 wounded patients every day. Since the beginning of the conflict, we have treated over 1,000 casualties, and sadly over two to 300 people died as a result of the fighting. MSF is concerned that things will get worse with the arrival of the rainy season, which will bring diseases like malaria and cholera. The Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, has described as heartbreaking the death of a young firefighter as she battled one of the many wildfires raging across the country. Devin Gale, who was 19, was trapped by a falling tree in British Columbia. 900 wildfires have been burning for weeks. Lawmakers in the United States have narrowly approved President Biden's latest defence budget. Most House Democrats opposed the legislation because Republicans added provisions. From Washington, here's David Willis. Approval of the annual defence budget is normally a formality, but this year Republicans who hold the majority in the House of Representatives sought to weave into the legislation amendments that would roll back diversity programmes and end funding for abortion and transgender medical care. The National Defence Authorization Act, as it's known, constitutes more than $880 billion in spending on pay rises, new equipment and aid for Ukraine. But virtually every Democrat voted against it. Hollywood actors have taken to the picket lines on the first day of a strike that, along with a continuing stoppage by writers, is expected to bring America's film and television business to a halt. The Actors' Union, the Screen Actors Guild, says actors are being victimised. Peter Bowes is in Los Angeles. I feel strongly about the pay issues, the different ecosystem that they're working in now, streaming shows that have shorter seasons, longer downtime for the actors when they're out of work, and they feel strongly that there needs to be a new contract, taking that into account. And the concerns about artificial intelligence prevail and it seems as if the offers that have been made so far by the studios it seems the Mm. actors haven't been reassured yet world news from the bbc hundreds of people in the central african republic have taken to the streets defying a ban on demonstrations to protest against constitutional amendments that would allow the president to seek a third term in office about 500 people marched through the capital bongi despite a heavy security presence A rights group in Tunisia has called for more emergency accommodation for migrants who were expelled from the city of Sfax last week and bussed to a remote desert area near the Libyan border. The Tunisian Forum for Economic and Social Rights said around 150 people, including children, were still stranded there. It said at least two had died. An architect has been charged in New York with the murder of three women whose unsolved killings more than a decade ago have become known as the Gilgo Beach Murders. Rex Hoyerman is also considered a prime suspect in the death of a fourth woman. Detectives say they've matched DNA from a pizza he ate to forensic material found on the victims. Their attorney, John Ray, welcomed the breakthrough after so long. We breathe a great sigh of relief. Myself, after a being on this case for 12 years and investigating this case relentlessly and as well the victims families it's finally something has been done and finally somebody has been caught the four women's bodies were found close to each other on a remote stretch of a long island beach in 2010 Novak Djokovic has made tennis history once again after reaching the Wimbledon men's final for a ninth time His semi-final win over Italy's Yannick Sinner on Friday means he's now reached a record 35 Grand Slam finals, surpassing the tally he previously shared with the former women's world number one, Chris Evert. He'll face the Spanish top seed Carlos Alcaraz in Sunday's final. BBC News.